So let's start our data analysis workflow and discuss the first step, which is the quality control of raw reads. So why should you care? Well, the reads can have several problems. Some of the base calls might not be correct. If the machine cannot guess at all, it will place in instead of one of the bases. Uh, there can be different kinds of biases in the data. There can be sequencing adapters left, or there can be even a sequence contamination. Uh, knowing about these problems is useful because uh, some of them you can correct for before you spend a lot of time on data analysis, and some you cannot correct, but at least you can keep them in mind when interpreting results. So there are several software packages available for doing quality control. Uh, in this lecture, we discuss FastQC and MultiQC. But first, let's look at the FastQ file format. So when you get your reads from the sequencing facility, you typically get a FastQ file. In this file, you have the reads, typically tens of millions of them. And for each read, there are actually four lines. So the first line is a read name. Every read has a name. Then the name is repeated. And then there is this rather strange looking uh, piece of text. These are actually the quality values of the different base calls. There is an excellent Wikipedia page where you can read more. Already at this point, I want to mention that uh, when you get the FastQ files, they are typically zipped. So please do not unzip them. It's not necessary. When you are doing analysis in Chipster, the analysis tools can cope with the zipped files. But let's look at those base qualities. So like I said, every base in the read actually has like a confidence value, which tells you how likely is it that that base call is, is wrong. Uh, this is in a, in a so-called uh, PRED scale, and here you see the formula. So let's say that there would be a, a one base would have a probability to be wrong, uh, uh, and the probability is 1 in 100. So we take log 10 of that, log 10 of this would be minus 2. Then we multiply it by minus 10. So minus 10 times minus 2 is 20, and that's our PRED score. So in other words, 20 means that the probability that that particular base score is wrong is 0.01. So essentially, each base has this kind of quality value attached. Now, to make things a bit more complicated, these values are not shown as numbers, but they are converted into ASCII characters. And there are different ways of doing that. Uh, currently, the uh, most popular way is the so-called Sanger encoding, which means that uh, we start to use ASCII characters from the character number 33. So let's look at that here, it maybe makes it easier to understand. So here we have the ASCII alphabet, which consists of different signs and numbers and letters. And the exclamation mark is ASCII character number 33. So now it has been just decided that when converting those quality values from numbers to characters, we start using these characters from this point. So this SSS here means that the Sanger encoding uses this part of the ASCII alphabet. So that here the capital I, for example, equals to 40. As you can see on this figure, there are also a lot of other colorful segments, and this refer to the older type of quality encoding that Illumina has used. But if you have recent data, then it will always have this quality encoding.
It's important to know qual what quality encoding is used because some of the analysis tools need that information. But if you don't know, there are tools that will figure it out for you. Uh, one of these tools is FastQC. It produces several uh, plots. Here we have per position base quality plot. So what we have is that on the x-axis we have the position in the read. So the first base in the read, the second, the third, the fourth, and so forth. So these particular reads are, are very short. They are only 40 bases long. And on, on the y-axis we have the quality value. Now the program has looked at all the reads and checked what is the quality value distribution at these different base positions. And then it plots them as a box plot. So you can, there is a blue line here, that's the mean. And there is a red line which is stuck up here, which is the median. So this particular data is, is very good, the quality values stay high uh, all along the read length. And the FastQC developers in the Babraham Institute have uh, uh, also been helpful in, in coloring the background of the plot so that you can easily see that if your yellow boxes, your data falls onto the green background, it's very good quality. If they start to come down to the orange one, it's okay. And if they fall to the red area, then uh, some of the reads might not be so good. So here we have an example of uh, not so good data. So as you can see, the mean, mean quality value uh, goes down towards the end of the reads. This is a bit older data. The current sequencers can cope better, but even with them, if you make very long reads, the base qualities uh, start to drop towards the end. FastQC also produces this kind of plot. So here we are looking at per position sequence content. So again, the position in the read, so first base and last base in the reads, and then we have percentage, and now it's percentage of the four different bases. So you would expect to see a flat line because when we fragment the transcripts, uh, that fragmentation happens in random positions. So you wouldn't see any, wouldn't expect to see any bias for any particular base at any point. However, with RNA-seq data, you typically see this kind of uh, bias. And uh, th this is, caused uh, in some steps in the library preparation. So we typically use random hexamers or transposases, and it can be that they have preferences for a particular sequence. Uh, this, this kind of problem cannot be corrected, so you shouldn't go and cut away these bases. They are fine, they are real bases. It just happens to be that the positions uh, in the transcript where the reads come from are, are biased. So uh, you would use the FastQC tool that I just showed if you have a couple of files, but if you have many FastQ files, uh, it can be painful to run it individually for each file. So one quick way would be to use a tool called MultiQC. And what it does, it actually behind the scenes runs FastQC for you, but then it combines the results uh, in, in, in one plot. And uh, the way how it works is that it, as an input, it takes a tar package of files. So there is a tool in Chipster called Utilities Make a Tar Package. So you take all your FastQ files and run this tool. Once you have the tar package, you give that as an input to this quality control tool, uh, read quality with MultiQC. Uh, 
then there is another tool in the quality control category. This is not strictly speaking about the quality of your reads, but it helps you to figure out uh, if your data was uh, prepared with a stranded sequencing protocol. So, like we discussed in the earlier video, uh, RNA-seq data can be unstranded or stranded, and it can be stranded in different ways. And it's important that you know which way your data is stranded, because uh, later on, when you are going to align your reads to the genome or count the reads per genes, these tools will need this strandedness information. Now, if you don't know how your data was produced, you can check it uh, in the quality control category of tools. There is a tool which has this monstrous name, RNA-6 strandedness inference, and inner distance estimation using RCQC. So basically, you take your FASTQ file and run this tool on it, and you will get a report. So what this tool does is it aligns a subset of your reads to the genome, and then it compares it to the locations uh, in the reference annotation, so where the genes are, and it tries to figure from that. There is also a manual page describing this in more detail. So when you get the report, it looks something like this. So this particular data was single-end data, and uh, then it tests the data against the different models, and it has noticed that about 95% of the reads seem to fit this particular model, plus, plus, minus, minus. We will have a look, look at what this means in the next slide. So from this, it will tell you that this data is stranded, and the read is always on the same strand as the gene. It also tells you then what parameters you should use when you are going to run an aligner or a quantification software. So typically the, the name of the parameters uh, differs a little bit, but you can always check here what you need to use. And so for this plus, plus, minus, minus, what it means is that if a read maps to the plus strand, then the parental gene is also on that strand. If it had been plus, minus, minus, plus, the situation would be the opposite. And for paired end data, uh, you can see here how the uh, logic goes.